today in our consideration of the seven deadly sins. We come to the deadly sin that lies in the middle of the traditional list of the seven deadly sins. Anger, before it lie, pride, avarice and envy. Three deadly sins we've already examined and then the three remaining for us to reflect on are lust, gluttony and sloth. So let us try to reflect sincerely on this particular sin, sincerely enough to see how it actually probably forms part of my life, even perhaps since I have been a young child. What is meant by anger? Because very often the very first thing people do is they say, well, what about Jesus in the temple? He was angry, wasn't he? And that is true. Our Lord was angry at the the abuse that was happening in the temple because moved by his great love of his father's house. But the deadly sin of anger is defined as an inordinate and uncontrolled feeling of hatred and wrath. And the key word there is inordinate, disordered. In other words, not really governed by reason, something where we are out of control. And of course, we all do have the sad experience of being carried away by anger and saying things or even doing things that we really regret afterwards, even at times very, very deeply. And it can be very sad, in fact, what a person does carried away by anger, sort of passion, a crime of passion. Very often it's a crime of the passion of anger, and they really deeply regret it afterwards. So Christ's anger in the temple, of course, is not inordinate. It's very reasonable. And in fact, it probably would have been wrong for Jesus not to allow himself grow angry at the scandalous abuse of the temple. But we all know when our anger has been disordered. It has been perhaps unjustified or disproportionate or our reactions have been excessive. And so precisely the Catechism of the Catholic Church points out that if anger reaches the point of a deliberate desire to kill or seriously wound a neighbour, it is gravely against charity. It is a mortal sin. So there is very clear. If it gets to that level, and that's why we call it, of course, one of these capital sins, because anger in itself mightn't lead, or mightn't do very much, but it can lead to terrible things, violence and even the extreme violence of, of killing, murder. And of course, the desire to do these things, if something is sinful, then the desire to do it is, of course, sinful also. But then we might ask, why do I fly off the handle so easy? And if only even the pagan philosopher Aristotle, hundreds of years before Christ, he pointed out that there's something really pleasant in anger. He said it's a kind of pleasant emotion because it leaves us feeling somehow superior to the object of our passion. So it's kind of linked to a kind of superiority complex or a haughtiness. I get a kind of power surge when I indulge my anger at something or especially at someone. I feel superior. So how do we fight this? How do I fight my bad temper? Well, Jesus himself says, look at me, learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Notice, gentleness gives rest to the soul. It is so true. There's nothing so exhausting. Nothing leaves us so worn out as getting into a rage about something. Some of the saints, as well as all of the saints, have lived this virtue of gentleness, also known as meekness, even that word perhaps is a little bit out of date, but gentleness. Even saints who famously did have, or they're kind of hot-blooded, they struggled against this. St. Francis de Sales is, is, is one such saint. Apparently he did have a very, he was very hot-blooded, but he really struggled very hard to overcome his feelings of anger. And he does tell us, it is, of course, he says, our our duty to resist evil and repress the faults of those for whom we are responsible. We think of parents with their kids. You can't let them run riot around the house. However, it should be done steadily and firmly, gently and quietly. There's another great saint who who, himself was, I think, more naturally placid and gentle. And that's St. John Bosco, the founder of the Salesians and the great educationalist of the of the 19th century, founding many schools for boys. At one stage, one of these, his, his Salesians came to him very angry in real steam about the behavior of one of the, bo- the school boys. He was running wild. And St. John Bosco asked him, has anything 
the boy has, has done, been a defense against God. And the Salesian had to answer, well, no. And, and St. John replied, well, then leave them be. In other words, don't get such, an, in such a stew about something that is not an offense against God. They're just acting up. Don't, don't overreact. Incidentally, St. Francis de Sales also warns us against anger with ourselves. So we don't think of normally ourselves as the object of our anger, but it can be. I get so angry with myself. How did I do that? And he says, well, really, these fits of anger, they, they come really from pride. They spring from no other source than self-love, which is disturbed and upset at seeing that something is imperfect. So we're a bit of a perfectionist, and that's the problem. So there again, don't even get too angry at yourself. Say, well, look, don't be such a perfectionist. Work on it. But as he says, gently and quietly. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. <laughs>